and uh, we'll get started. Um, I don't have too much here this week. Um, the AWRL has a new CEO and a new uh, director for emergency management. And uh, we'll see how those uh, come. Supposedly, there will be a section managers meeting with uh, both of these people uh, coming up uh, here shortly. Uh, once they get in in place and get in their positions and get their feet wet and so on. Um, so we'll see how that goes. And uh, once I get that, uh, they've recorded, we'll uh, post it. So uh, give people some ideas of what's going on. I don't foresee any changes in our section. Um, everything we have seems to be working very well. Uh, we're very fortunate to, to have the right people in the right places to, uh, to get things done. And uh, with help of people like Greg and, uh, and others with the WinLink, that uh, works very well. And uh, also working with FL Digi as well, just uh, on the other side of that uh, digital coin. So other than that, I'm, I don't have an awful lot this morning. Bruce was going to talk about uh, VHF contesting. So uh, we'll, uh, what do you have coming up other than uh, Heidi doing some testing? That, that's Heather. Or Heather. <laughs> that's right. Yes, Heather doing some testing. Yeah. I, yeah, I think she's in the middle of a, a test session right now. Yeah. So other things coming up from my list here. Uh, okay, we've got the VHF contest is next weekend, and it starts at uh, 11 o'clock on uh, Saturday morning. Is that right? Yep. Yes. And uh, we're still at uh, San Diego condition yellow for the uh, the heat, and then Santa Ana's, as uh, everybody knows, are going to start blowing uh, uh, in a in a what, Tuesday is it when they those start? We're keeping an eye on the weather forecast. Uh, some people are doing uh, peer to peer practice on Winlink. If you have that capability, uh, we've been doing a little bit uh, with uh, the VHF uh, VARA peer-to-peer, -peer, and uh, some people are anxious to start some VARA HF peer-to-peer uh, -peer practice, and so that'll be uh, starting soon. And if uh, anybody has any ideas for uh, what we should do during the national uh, simulated emergency test, uh, we might be able to do something on the actual weekend that that's scheduled for. Uh, October 3rd and 4th. If you have ideas, uh, please shoot me an email and uh, we'll bounce some ideas around to see how we can work it in. I know uh, Bob AI6KU uh, is going to be working with uh, the Mars system uh, during the uh, SET period and he's hoping to uh, do something Aries with Mars, perhaps some sort of crossover thing uh, for the, uh, the SET. Uh, in San Diego in the past, we've not officially done an SCT on the SCT weekend. Occasionally, we've done some events and said, uh, okay, that's what we're doing for SCT, but not necessarily on the official national weekend that it's called for. And uh, I've got to remind myself here, I've got a little note to myself to make sure that I update my contest log software and test it out before next weekend. So... And I think that's all I've got there, Dave. All right. The other thing uh, that I did forget to bring up is the FCC has proposed a fee for amateur radio licenses. And if you go to the AWRL homepage, there is a link there to click on. Um, the um, rulemaking proposal is open for comments. And uh, it'd be a good time to get lots of comments in there and just... Uh, bury them with uh, comments from everybody. Um, with the amount of money that the amateur community saves the country in communications, it's uh, a shame that they think to go that way, that uh, somebody decided to go that way anyway. Yeah, still nothing from Bruce this morning. So let me ask, uh, for VHF contest uh, purposes, uh, do rally times, do people want to set rally times or just leave it wide open? Uh, in the past, we've, we've actually, you know, set the, 
the rally times would be the same as when we do the VHF rally for fun. We've had uh, rally times. And then for the VHF contest itself, we've set up rally times every three or four hours throughout the day. Uh, in general, uh, do people like that idea? Uh, or what are people's thoughts on that? Let's uh, ahead, raise your hand, uh, maybe if you have comments. Yeah, on let's raise, raise your hand if you have a comment. Uh, or if you just do, let's do a raise your hand if you like the idea of, of the rally time. Let's go that way. Or click the yes button, either way. We're seeing some yeses there. So what I'll do this week is uh, I'll update the, uh, the VHF contest uh, guidance that uh, we've put out in the past and uh, I'll resend it uh, with dates updated. Uh, we've usually put in uh, the usual frequencies in case people uh, don't remember or are new to uh, VHF contesting you know what frequencies to use uh, for FM. A reminder, don't use repeaters, but uh, we, we list the, uh, the FM frequencies. Uh, most people can do uh, FM dual band, and those, so those frequencies are on the email that we'll put out. And remember, no offset, no tone, just plain simplex uh, to work on, on FM for that. Is anybody planning to do any rover work during the contest? Uh, uh, I don't remember any Aries members in the past doing rover work. Occasionally some summits on the air stuff. So no crossover known at this time? All right. Well, a, a few of us are going to get together in Tierra Santa at the park. So that'll sort of be a rover exercise. If it works out, we may move to a, another location and make it officially a rover. but. Right now, we're it's sort of individual participation, counting, logging it that way. Uh, but uh, I'll have we'll have a number of mobile radios there ready to get started. Frank, that sounds like a great idea. And that that way we'll have donuts and sort of have a social <laughs> way to kick out kick off the contest. Anybody else have thoughts or what you're planning for a VHF contest? Pretty quiet group this morning. So Not maybe a, a clarification question. Uh, since we're gonna meet at the local park nearby, we're pretty, pretty close to our home QTH. We would just log that as single operator type uh, operation rather than rover, unless we know we're really going to move to different sites and act as a rover in a different grid scare. So I assume as a single operator, we can go out to uh, a mobile site and also work at home. Is that correct? Dave, you're the expert on rules. <laughs> that's the way I understand it. Uh, that's why I was hoping Bruce would be here to, to uh, cover some of that because that's his uh, his ball game. He uh, he's a big contester among uh, among this group, uh, especially VHF and UHF. So uh, <clears throat> still have Is there anybody here that's planning to uh, participate in the VHF contest? for the very, very first time. Uh, if so, go, go ahead and raise your hand, please, if it's gonna be your first time doing it. So Mike, K6AMQ, okay, that'll be your first time. And uh, Richard, okay, got you. So Mike, any questions about the VHF contest or uh, trepidation? Uh, the only thing is that, you know, I've tried doing this before and I, where I live in a hole, I can't get anything when it's, uh, have to do simplex, I have to rely on um, repeaters where I live. So I'm going to have to go to a high location 
So I'll be remote. And Heidi, it's going to be your first time? Uh, not hearing Heidi, but she's got her uh, check mark up for yes. Okay. It was somebody else. Was it Mike going to be first time uh, participant? Keeping in mind, we have about 15 mics in. Uh, yeah. Okay. So maybe a different mic. Oh, Ryan. Ryan. Okay. Your first time, Ryan? Yeah, that's right. Actually, I, uh, I tried contesting a couple months ago and kind of ran into the same problem with living in a hole. So I'll. I'll probably have to end up going mobile as well. Okay. Um, Patrick, it's going to be your first time. Uh, is that a, a hand up or are you? Uh, go ahead, Patrick. Yeah, it appears that you have Ed, what is it, uh, W3ED has been trying to get your attention. Okay, thank you, Patrick. So, Ed, go ahead. Well, I finally, I finally raised my virtual hand because the other, other method wasn't working, but it'll be my first time at a real contest. I've participated once with one contact, and we will have Frank there at the park to provide professional guidance as well. Excellent. Excellent. And you can talk to each other and grab points for that, right? Yes. Of course. For that, we'll use uh, a couple orange juice cans and some string. <laughs> <laughs> and while I've got the floor, I might as well mention that uh, reminding us that this is Natural Preparedness Month, I put a graphic on the side of me, and I'm not sure it's visible or readable from your perspective. So if I talk, maybe you've got me on speaker. Maybe I'm a bigger size when I talk. If that's the case, then you should be able to read it. The latest graphic does show what to do if you're in a walker or on a wheelchair or with a cane, because they wanna make sure everyone has an idea of what the best recommended process is when we have our big earthquake. Thanks for posting that. So, how many bands are people going to operate on? I'm going to try to add a few extra bands. My Which bands are you going to try to add, Frank? Well, uh, I'll get a better antenna for six meters. Two meters is good. I'm going to try to add 220 and 440 is a natural. And then I've got 1296 also on FM. So we'll try five bands from the mobile. Something that I've found, something I've found when hopping around on bands, if you're using logging software, make sure you know how to disable your logging software. So if you're doing a, if your laptop is talking to your radio and you're trying to do some band like 220 that's not in that connection, to make sure you know how to uh, disable the automatic polling that's going on, so you can actually log the 220 contact. Have you run into that before, Frank? Yeah, that's a good tip. And that's where some of our rallies and field day and other exercises came in handy because it gave us a chance to debug our logging software. So on the Mac, uh, we've got a check mark so I can disable my uh, Yesu rig there and manually log. So that makes it easy there. So Dave, we uh, almost talked ourselves out here. I think so. I, I don't have uh, have anything really to add here other than I suggest you, uh, everybody go to the AWRL web homepage and click on the link on the license fees and uh, make your comments known about, uh, about that. They want to grow the ranks of the amateur community, but if they're going to charge $50 for a license, then, uh, uh, I think they're going to end up losing a lot of people. 
Yeah, one of my concerns with that is we're, we're just starting to get uh, some of the uh, outlying communities uh, to be license compliant. I'm thinking off-roaders and also the, uh, the drone community uh, are finally starting to uh, say, yeah, we need to have a hammer and a license for stuff. And if we start slapping on fees, then it will probably uh, increase uh, non-compliance. That's, that's the other side of that, is that uh, there'll be a lot of people just saying, the heck with it, I'm not going to renew my license and pay the fee or whatever and uh, just operate illegally. So uh, something else to, uh, to consider. Hey, Patrick's got his hand up. What do you got, Patrick? Well, well thanks for allowing me to come in here for a minute. Well, based on the conversation that I'm hearing here, it's similar to some of the stuff that I see on the Facebook group, uh, Ham Radio. The biggest thing is that uh, a number of those individuals who are part of that group are not amateur radio operators. They just want to see what it is that they could learn. The input that it provided is the fact that if this is the process in which they have to go about and become part of the amateur radio community, then they may as well go ahead and do something else or decide to purchase a GMRS license and take it from there. Uh, the other thing is the fact that uh, there, it, it seems to be creating a rift among the amateur radio community as well because of the fact that a lot of people say, talk, go back to the days in which they were charged for their, for their licenses, you know, back in the 70s, 80s, and when they stopped charging for that. But the fact is they fail to realize that a number of those individuals who are actually getting into amateur radio they don't come from the wealthy community. They come from the average community and something of that sort could definitely impact them, particularly if they're on a budget already. So I, I think that's the, the impact not only is going to happen to the amateur radio community as far as getting the initial license, but going forward, they'll be less likely to advance. And as they advance, as we all know, you know, we take that training that we, we learn while advancing and try to pay it forward or bring the individuals up from behind and uh, show, give them the benefit of our training and experience. So uh, it's going to be impacted not only just from the fact that they are advancing uh, the hobby, but those individuals who could learn something that be beneficial outside amateur radio community itself, but that is reinforced by the training is going to occur as well. Did I get through? Yeah, good yep, comments, did. Patrick. Good comments. Anybody else have any comments, subjects, or uh, discussion they'd like to uh, bring up? Well, I have a question for Dave. Go ahead. Uh, on this uh, fee thing, wasn't the FCC's notice of uh, proposed rulemaking the result of congressional mandate? It looks like it was. It looks like it was uh, a rule put together by, I lost the guy's name here, uh, Ray Baum. I'm not sure who he is. Uh, there was a, a section that, uh, that he wrote uh, and submitted uh, for proposed rulemaking because they're supposed to be able to support themselves with, uh, with fees. And apparently they haven't been doing that. So this is one of the ways they're looking to support the whole FCC uh, organization by increasing fees. And they're also doing that in uh, some areas of the broadcast community as well. Okay, I, I think that name Ray Baum, uh, that's not an actual individual, but it's a name that they came up by putting the first letter of each word in the uh, title of the act together. If you look at it that way, I think that's where that came from. I don't think that's a, an actual individual. Uh, Dave? Yeah, go ahead, Patrick. Uh, according to the, the act itself, in terms of what I was reading in it, is an indication where they allow the FCC to establish prices or fees for the, the, the various uh, license uh, uh, categories, 
but uh, they've had that option before and they eliminate it. So the Ray Bonds Act, uh, what it does is kind of reiterates that fact and because of the fact that, that, that since the, we are going to transition and change as far as the economy is concerned, and this, this came back in 2018, uh, they wanted to make sure that the FCC could actually, uh, uh, you know, provide its own fees in, in, in order to uh, self-regulate. But nonetheless, uh, I, I see where a lot of people have that problem. And thanks, John, for bringing that up. Dave, you have anything else for us? No, I don't right now. I, like I said, if you go on the AWRL website, you can read the whole uh, thing. There's 800 and some pages there, but uh, trying to find the section here. Uh, it's in Division P, which I believe is around page 180, 190 in that ballpark. Uh, so you can read what it is and what it has to say. And then uh, go back to the AWRL page and click on the link to make some comments. Any further business for this uh, conference? All right, I'm going to suggest. Hey, Dave, your host, is this a wrap? I think this is going to be a wrap. I think we're going to have a short one this morning, uh, especially since it's a holiday weekend. Apparently, Bruce got tied up. Uh, I still haven't heard anything from him this morning. So uh, we'll uh, have another one next week, which is our regular uh, Aries meeting week and uh, started at 10 o'clock. And uh, hopefully we can get some of Bruce's comments in there before the start of the uh, contest at 11. So unless anybody else has any comments for the good of the group, uh, we'll go ahead and bring it to a close. Have a safe weekend, everybody. Thanks, Judy, you too. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close this out for this morning. Thanks everybody for being there, be safe. And uh, we'll talk to everybody next week and on the radio in between.